Hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Los Angeles, Columbus, Ohio, Dayton, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Lexington, Kentucky, Burbank, California, and Honolulu. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. Hey, speaking of crazy, so Thomas Massey, I think we could both, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I think, uh, I don't agree with him on everything, but I agree with that he's one of the few people, I think, who has integrity in in politics, if if maybe not the only person I know in Congress anyway, on a national level. Um, and he recently called for us to end funding Israel. He says, if Israel insists on destroying civilian targets in Lebanon, let them buy and build their own weapons. American taxpayers should not be funding this. And so he shows this building. So that's a an apartment building. And then it gets le- here it is. It gets leveled. Watch. Let me let me get to the video. Here it is. So Thomas M- Massey's conclusion is we should stop funding a- and uh, Israel and let them build their own weapons. What do you say to that, Tim? Oh boy, this is not an easy one, is it? But um, no. I I would say I closely agree. Uh, closely, I'm I'm not well versed enough to come out and make a definitive statement that we should defund completely. But I will I will try and give my best answer, which is it's one thing to say we have a longstanding military alliance with Israel. There are enemies that are attacking it, and we want to make sure that they're able to defend themselves. Iran's firing missiles, Hezbollah's firing missiles. But yeah, when we come to the point where civilian buildings in Lebanon are being bombed by Israel, we're looking at an expansion of war, which I don't think the U.S. people in a military alliance have agreed to or declared themselves, which which would be the simple answer is if Israel wants to make moves externally, which are basically declarations of war or expansions of war, then Congress probably has to make a declaration that the United States is on board with this conflict if we're sending money to that. So I, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world on this issue. I, I'm not going to pretend to have the, the best answers in the world. But what I can say is at the very least, the moment Israel makes a move like this, our funding should pro- should be suspended for any external conflict. And Congress should probably have to make a statement because if we're funding Israel, who's using rockets to blow up targets in Israel, that's the U.S. being involved in a in a, in, a, in war. Now, unfortunately, Congress hasn't declared war since World War II, so I don't expect it to happen. But I would I would largely agree with Massey on this one. Uh, well, that's good. That's good to hear because I largely agree. And I'm I'm when it comes to uh, Israel and Gaza, I'm, I'm pretty radical as far as I can tell. Uh, most I'm people not, go ahead. I'm not nearly as radical. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I think there's, uh, with Ukraine, I think it's fairly cut and dry. We do have an agreement. It's, it was a paper agreement, not a real treaty where we said, if you get invaded and you give up your nukes, we'll defend you. I, I, I don't like the idea that one generation promises the children of the next that Ron Paul said that that's a good point. And, and Ukraine just, it doesn't make sense for the U S to be involved in this dispute, which is largely it has to do with Sevastopol Russians, the, the Russian, uh, industrial center and naval base. It's the home of their black sea fleet. We're clear. NATO is clearly creating war pressures by intervening in the way they've done over the past decade. Israel's a longstanding ally going back, uh, 70 plus years. That being said, a really great point was made on, on my show. I can't remember who said it was, it was I'm sorry, it was Clint Russell. And he said, the idea that the only way Israel can exist is through perpetual U.S. funding is absurd, and they should probably get to the point where they can sustain themselves, and I completely agree with that. So there is a difference, and I don't think we should cut off funding for defensive purposes in the immediate because that would probably result in an Afghanistan times 10, but I think the goal right now should be setting a deadline of when they're going to sustain themselves, when we decide we will not be involved, and I think it's fair to say that if they're now getting involved in external conflicts with with countries like Lebanon and Iran, we as the United States may agree to, to provide defense and funding to an ally. But if they're now sparking wars or and by all means, look, someone's going to argue Lebanon, Hezbollah started the war. Fine. But if a war is starting, Congress needs to declare whether or not we as the United States are going to be involved in that. And if we provide f- funding to Israel for which it is used to attack these en- these countries and that results in, say, Iran declaring war on us, Congress has to make a declaration. and We can't just blindly fund these things. Yeah, I would uh, at least Trump. Trump, you saw what he said on the PBD podcast. I hope the other day he said that you know we he's not for regime change in Iran that we can't even run our own country. So that <laughs> seems like the sanest thing I've heard somebody say about right. uh, Iran in a long time. Would you agree with that? 
I do, but I will say I think Trump's going to be a largely pro-Israel president. And while I'm not trying to suggest that I'm staunchly anti-Israel, I think people who are who are anti-intervention or concerned with war should recognize while Trump probably is going to say great things as it pertains to Ukraine, Russia, Taiwan, China, Iran, I think when it comes to the conflict uh, affecting Israel, Trump's probably going to offer a lot of funding and it's probably going to expand war in the region. It's better, you know, uh, do you think it's better for, uh, you know, why I was at the Democratic convention and there was all very rah, rah war and they didn't want to get, a, they, they don't, there was no diplomacy. There was no like, so Trump says, I can get along with these tough guys. I get along with China I can get along with uh, North Korea and Russia. And I know how to, and it, isn't that better than w wanting to have war? I mean, what, what happened yeah. to diplomacy? It's crazy, isn't it? Uh, I, I do think I want to I want to put an addendum on what I just said. I think the greater probability with Trump is peace agreements and a de-escalation. Uh, I'm not saying it's a majority, but I'm saying it's high. It's a much higher likelihood than under the Democrat neo party or neo neo lib neocon uniparty. But, uh, you know, look, Donald Trump crossed the demilitarized zone into North Korea with no security detail. It's one of the greatest things he did in his first term. He walked across with Kim Jong-un. They shook hands. He stood in North Korea and he walked back. And I, I, I got to ask some of his staff about that. And they were like, we were freaking out because we didn't plan this. He just did it. That's amazing. We're not, we're not friends with uh, North Korea. We don't like how they run things. They're not good people, but we, we want peace. We don't want a war. We don't want nuclear weapons. And Trump recognizes that. And he got attacked in the media yeah. for, for, for these uh, attempts at peace. Look, you're fighting with your neighbor because he keeps, you know, taking your newspaper or whatever. You come to an agreement and say, stop taking my newspaper. We're going to stop fighting. It doesn't mean you like each other, but it means we, we're going to chill things out. They attack Trump over this, and it's, and it's absurd. I've even, I even met a guy who hated Donald Trump. He had Trump derangement syndrome. And when he asked me, he's like, how could you possibly like that guy? And I said he crossed the DMZ with no security detail in an effort to show a peace offering to North Korea. And he goes, no, he didn't. It never happened. Uh the media doesn't want to admit that Donald Trump is the peace candidate. They don't want people to realize that. They want to think, they want you to think Trump is Hitler and he's going to start all these wars when he's, in fact, the only president in my lifetime who did not start a war. Hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Los Angeles, Columbus, Ohio, Dayton, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Lexington, Kentucky, Burbank, California, and Honolulu. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. Mm -hmm.